Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Fear Dragon, and I'm going to be joined here today by a very special guest. I'm going to be joined by Kevin Dong, who's actually leading the charge for co-op at Frost Giant. Kevin, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing great. I can't, I can't wait for, or I, I'm so excited that Stormgate is finally out to the public, and I can't wait to share more news and more details uh, with you, the general community, about it. Oh, man, it's, it's so great to have the title of the game and everything, so we can stop referring to it as Frost Giants Future Game. It ended up being a mouthful, but uh, I do want to actually give a quick intro for you a little bit more for people who don't know. You are also known as the Alias Monk, or have been, especially in the past, and you have done so much, especially for people in the StarCraft scene. I mean, you've been part of Team Liquid, you've done a lot of writing, you've been all over the place just creating content and being involved in StarCraft, right? Oh, yeah. Um, I guess it started off back in my Warcraft 3 days. I was a big fan of Warcraft 3. And when StarCraft 2 was released, I uh, got on, I hopped on that train immediately. Um, I started contributing to Team Liquid uh, part, as part of like strategy guides. I also wrote a bunch of preview um, and review articles on tournaments. So just a big esports fan overall. Uh, I eventually got the chance to uh, work with Team Liquid as, as, on an official basis. And from there, um, I was hired onto uh, the Blizzard design team, uh, primarily doing co-op and then transitioning to, to both co-op and competitive play and now here i'm at frost giant and um it couldn't have the, the, my path couldn't have been any cooler than what it is today and i'm so glad you actually also mentioned the uh, transition over to blizzard doing co-op and everything because it's going to be a, related to a lot of what we're going to be talking about today which is a bit more of that co-op experience but also I, I think one of the things that really struck me about some of the end ways that you guys were phrasing things in the announcement about Stormgate and Frost Giants project and everything was that you guys want to design a truly social RTS. What what exactly does that mean? And what's kind of like the motivation or drive for making that like a key focus for you guys? Yeah, so uh, as you mentioned, we are trying to be the first truly social RTS, um, and it really uh, harkens back to the the StarCraft II days. Even though StarCraft II is technically a multiplayer game, and even though there's chat involved, there's clans, um, honestly, we get a lot of feedback that StarCraft II can feel uh, like very lonely. It can feel like a very uh, solitary experience. So um, in our game going forward, we tr we're going to try to make every individual mode of the game, of which there are four, um, we, and for every individual mode, we're going to ask ourselves, um, how are you going to be able to experience this game with other people? We feel like part of the, the virality and the key ingredients that make a lot of other genres, such as MOBAs, Battle Royales, uh, Roblox, for example, very... Um, Part, part of those ingredients that make it very successful is the variety, virality of it and the social aspect. And we learned a lot of those lessons as well from the introduction of the co-op mode, like we're going to talk about uh, later on in StarCraft 2. Yeah, that's awesome to hear. And I think specifically, co-op is the one that's probably the easiest to imagine becoming that kind of more social experience and everything. But uh, I'd love to hear from like just your thoughts. And I'm going to also put a whole preface here for everyone else. Kevin, you can also do the same if you want to. But... All of this is still very early on. Stormgate just got announced, so we're not expecting any feature promises. Please keep in mind anything that is said here is definitely going to be more about uh, you giving your thoughts kind of on what you imagine, what you're thinking about with the future direction of Stormgate. But uh, one of the things I really wanted to ask about was the decision for co-op to actually be three players rather than two, as you were saying in the StarCraft days. Uh, what was kind of like the motivation for some of that? Yeah, I would say it's uh, the motivation behind that is kind of like a push pull. Um, our thought process is that the more players that you get within the co-op mode, the greater chance or the greater opportunity there is for cooperation, and the more it feels like a team game. In StarCraft II co-op, uh, it was uh, primarily a two-player game in which you could kind of help help your ally, but it felt like more like two one v ones instead of like truly people cooperating with each other. And with a three v three mode, we feel like there's more opportunity for two players to go on like the top path and and one player to go on the bottom path and have all these crazy interactions and uh, more opportunity for wombo combos when you can have three players uh, uh, contributing their abilities instead of two. Um, the other end of the spectrum is that we do realize that RTS is uh, a very challenging mode to get into and can be very intimidating. There can be a lot of complexity on the map, uh, the more players you add to the game. It's not just one unit that you're keeping track of, like in a MOBA, or one uh, character that you're controlling in an FPS. And so we want to intentionally limit the, the complexity there in having to keep track of multiple players. Um, we also want 
all of our game modes to be uh, kind of congruent. So um, this happens to follow for PvP and the campaign as well, where we are trying to aim for three players, especially in PvP where there are three times two number of players, that's even more difficult to track. So we ended up here in a kind of a happy compromise where we're going to be more than two, but maybe we feel like four is leading slightly over towards like too complex. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It, it kind of sounds like a lot of the co-op experience, the stuff that you're kind of mentioning, it sounds like some of the players are maybe going to be a little bit more specialized, either like, hey, you're going to take the top objective stuff and I'll take this, the bottom objective stuff. Or is there any kind of other dynamics that you're thinking is going to be a bit more possible with three players versus just two? Yeah, I, um, I think the idea of role differentiation, um, especially soft role differentiation, is, is something that we're looking forward to. Um, in StarCraft II, initially, co-op was designed with the mentality that everyone can solo, everyone can just beat the mission by themselves. And we're thinking of it from a completely different approach. Um, I believe StarCraft II, a large reason the co-op mode was designed that way is because um, the design team at the time, uh, they were unfamiliar with this concept of a whole as a whole because it was truly like new and relatively revolutionary so they went with the more safe approach of you know even if your ally is terrible and they suck you can kind of just like breeze through the mission on on, um, on your own um, however what that did is that um, with that design mindset there's not as many opportunities for cooperation um, in starcraft 2 co-op while there is maybe like somewhere between zero and two maybe three opportunities for cooperation with every commander in our game we're going to have we're going to aim for something closer to like three plus or four or five um, uh, opportunities three or five opportunities for each individual hero or each individual commander in order to um, associate and help the other and what that means is we do allow for players to split up we do allow for players to um, to kind of specialize in their own roles. Maybe one player goes for anti-air, maybe one player um, is the melee guy and the other guy is the range guy, or maybe one player is like the expansion guy and he's like the defensive guy. We do want to opt for that, that higher specialization, but at the same time, we don't want to commit to hard roles, which you, are, you feel like you have to do this. Um, it's going to be more like everyone has uh, has their own toolbox, and some commanders might be better at expanding than others. But you know, every commander can still expand, and you can choose to, uh, to play the way you want. Gotcha. That actually sounds really cool, and I think it sounds like there's been a lot of learnings from StarCraft Two and your time there working on co-op and everything. I guess we know that now there's going to be like some maybe a little bit focus in the difference of like role differentiation and stuff. There's going to be three players and stuff. What other kind of things can we expect from co-op from Frost Giant compared to, say, StarCraft II co-op? I'm sure you guys have had a lot of learnings and there's going to be some differences, I'd expect, or also similarities. Yeah, I, I could talk on this for, for hours on end, but um, I would say the main thesis I have here is that StarCraft II co-op was really designed to be played for maybe 10 hours at a time. Um, when the team first initially conceived of the mode, uh, 10 hours was what... Um, is really the goalpost that uh, the design team went for. But it became much more popular than initially expected. Instead of playing for 10 hours, players were actually playing for hundreds or even thousands of hours at a time. And the design team really had to adapt um, with every year in order for this, uh, for this new paradigm. Um, so what happened is that the design team was given a task every year of make the next best possible update this year. Um, however, they um, we weren't really like, we didn't really know if it was going to be uh, the last update ever. So every year we try to create the next best thing for our players. And what, and what we eventually got is uh, a bunch of Jenga blocks where uh, we kept building something on top of the foundation and another thing on top of the other and another thing on top of that. And each subsequent year, we added truly what I still believe the next best thing. But overall, if you take a look back um, from an outsider perspective, the whole tower as a whole um, wasn't as cohesive as it could have been. So our, our mission here at Frost Giant is really going to be um, to take a lot of the core formula of StarCraft II co-op and kind of rebuild it with the idea of um, things like progression and customization and in-game replayability um, in mind from the get-go. We, we're trying to design a co-op mode that um, that we can support for years to come with the, uh, with the little puzzle pieces here and there already built from the get-go. Um, in addition to that, um, some... in um, some kind of my, more minor things that I kind of want to get into. Some lessons are um, we learned that 
uh, how to do cooperation. Um, one of the lessons we learned is forced cooperation feels really bad. There's a lot of missions within co-op that force both you and a teammate to maybe stand on this objective um, together for a long period of time. And um, you often get very frustrated when you stand there and your ally just won't get over there. So our goal with that, this in mind is we will not make anything forced cooperation where we're trying to at least move away from that, but instead we're going to have an extreme make it a bonus mentality. So for example, if maybe if we were to redesign that mission, you can stand on the objective um, and it'll go maybe 10 times as slowly, but eventually you'll be able to complete the objective on your own. If your ally steps on the objective, it'll complete almost instantaneously. So very large rewards for making it a bonus. And to that end, we're also, um, we're also again, I, like I talked about before, we're also introducing new cooperation um, opportunities for players. So even though we're not going to have anything that's forced, we're going to make uh, we're going to make so many abilities that make it feel good for you to help your ally and give you opportunities to help your ally as much as possible. Um, and then finally, one thing I want to mention is um, one thing we could never get right in StarCraft II is the idea of uh, buffs and debuffs. Um, the problem with StarCraft II is that at its core, it's a very lethal game. Units die very quickly. And co-op was designed around that core foundation of StarCraft II. So a lot of the balance of the game was based around how quickly can I kill my, my opponent? How quickly can I kill the AI? So because of that, the question became, why would you ever debuff something if you can just kill it? Right. Mm -hmm. So we were never to make we were never able to make that feel good. And therefore, um, it was a whole class of abilities that we did not have access to. So no, that I know that was long, but these no, are just some of the ideas that we have that we want to iterate on from StarCraft too. Oh, I absolutely love that. And I hadn't even considered, yeah, when everything is just trying to you're trying to obliterate every unit as fast as possible. Having it have a little debuff to do less damage doesn't actually matter that much. That's actually so interesting to go into. Uh, I want to actually circle back to something else that you also talked about, which is just trying to keep the players more engaged for more than, like you were saying, 10 hours, it seems like, was the goalpost for StarCraft 2. Uh, what are some of the ways that you actually go about doing that? I know you talked about some really cool things with, like, cooperative play and stuff, but uh, I... I think one of the things that springs to mind for me is like there are systems that a lot of other game developers and stuff have come up with where technically you need to sink in, you know, 100,000 hours or something into it. Yeah. But like the last, you know, 990 or so hours or something is basically just this massive grind to basically optimize the last 1% or so. So mm -hmm. what's kind of uh, like the mentality approaching creating a long term goal for co-op? Yeah, so the, the two key focuses we're working towards there is the idea of progression and the idea of customization. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about progression first. Um, like I said, when co-op initially was announced, Brutal was the hardest difficulty, and there was not really a plan to, to go beyond Brutal. Um, and and this, uh, eventually, the StarCraft II team added Brutal Plus, um, which was kind of a compromise for a late game uh, difficulty spike. It's not what we, it's not what we would have... Uh, actually wanted if we had if we were to plan it from the long term but the reality became because of starcraft's high lethality um it was very difficult to actually balance the game such that you could add hp or add damage to units and have it be um very fun going it by just adding by tweaking those two factors um again that was because you, there were a lot of breakpoints in the game. Units died very quickly, so um, the breakpoints became: Can your nuke kill this army? And if it if it does not kill them and it leaves them with like 10 HP, that nuke instantly drops in power. And co-op was really balanced with that in mind. So um, with the idea of um, lower lethality, we can uh, more easily adjust unit health and unit damage, and just a lot of other uh, a lot of er a lot of areas there in order to scale the difficulty um, into late game. Um, and as with co-op, we're going to have a as with StarCraft II co-op, we're going to have a lot of mutators as well, so even more opportunities to scale the difficulty. Um, the second part of it is customization in StarCraft II. Um, basically, you could only customize your commander in two ways. The first was the mastery system, which was kind of like the second progression system that we added. And then, the, and then we later added on the prestige system, which is maybe like 
the fourth or fifth progression system that was added. So again, very like different progression systems that allowed you to customize, but they didn't really work in tandem with each other very cohesively. Um, our ideas for building the StarCraft II uh, or for building Stormgate co-op with greater customization is the idea of um, itemization and the, and the idea that you can kind of uh, equip your uh, commanders with items out of game. So maybe uh, I, I have a mage, for instance, and my mage does is just a normal mage, but I can equip her to deal fire damage, or I can remove that and I equip her to deal frost damage or lightning damage or water damage, for instance. And we feel like this uh, allows players to um, have a greater opportunity to customize these commanders. And also it allows for players to kind of build a deck, deck building game where you can uh, add or insert items into your slots um, in order to uh, kind of create these wombo combos of, of like items that synergize well with each other. So um, a lot more progression, a lot more customization in our game from the get-go. Oh man, I love the idea of that, especially paired with what you were talking about, about kind of like player specialization and stuff and be able to take on not necessarily super strong roles, but leaning more into particular roles using that customization. That sounds really awesome. I guess one other last thing I wanted to actually talk about was... I think one of my favorite parts of co-op is that specifically in StarCraft 2, my experience with it has oftentimes been that players of very different skill levels are able to engage with it as opposed to multiplayer. I think I literally got one of my roommates to quit StarCraft because, you know, I 1v1 them and it was not a fun experience for them. So I think that's been really, really cool. Uh, how do you think that kind of maybe will play into some of these like design choices and stuff that you guys are uh, talking about with co-op? So I'm thinking about some of the things that you've mentioned around basically trying to make it so it's not like just soloable missions is like one thing that's coming to mind. Like, is that going to be a little bit more difficult with a gameplay style where you might have two people or like multiple people of very differing levels? Mm hmm um, I st so uh, with the idea of soft roles, we're going to give players the opportunity as long as they select a reasonable uh, difficulty mm -hmm. in order to play more of a support role. So theoretically, in this mode, you'll if you pick a more carry-focused commander, you'll still be able to carry your allies as long as they do uh, more, uh, I would say, uh, a simpler task, such as mm -hmm. maybe you give them the task to expand, and therefore they they are giving you money, or they um, they they are focused on defense, and they don't necessarily have to carry the missions themselves. So because the the missions, like you alluded to, are more customizable, or the commanders are more customizable, you are able to lean towards a direction where you are able to support your allies if they're newer, um, and you are able to onboard them more easily. Um, another thing I want to mention is we're really focused on onboarding so we're, we're dedicated to creating tools to help you not only onboard your friends but also onboard your friends within a given game so they won't necessarily have to kind of go into single player and like play the tutorial but within um, a co-op game for instance you'll be able to help them um, get into the game themselves and that's something we've actually been prototyping in our unreal 4 prototype uh, in our first year of development Oh, that is, I'm actually super excited to see that happen. Um, that's going to be really, great, really great to see. Well, uh, I don't want to take up too much of your time because this has already been a very, very busy week for you guys, I think. So uh, thank you so much, Kevin. It's been such a pleasure to have you. First of all, do you have any kind of like little shout outs and stuff or, or I guess specifically things that people can go do? I know that uh, I'm a massive fan of all the stuff that you guys have been putting out and I'm actually really looking forward to checking out, say like signing up for the beta and everything. I think really more than anything else, I just, I, I really love you guys' Frost Giant merch, man. Where can I get more of that? Well, to sign up for the beta, first of all, I'm glad you set us up for that. You can sign up for the beta at playstormgate.com, and you can also sign up for the, our newsletter there where you'll receive constant developmental updates. Um, also, please wish list us on Steam. Uh, that's going to help us a lot. Tell your friends about our game. That's going to help us a lot. And for you, Ravi, I have a special present for you. Uh, yeah, I have oh. this cool little frost giant mug. Oh, my God. Thank you. This is this is exactly what I wanted. Thank you so much, Kevin. Oh my God! How did I know? Uh, you know, you're just that good of a designer, man. You can mm -hmm. see so far into the future and the future designs of the world, it seems. But thank you so much, Kevin. It was such a pleasure talking with you. All the links that Kevin was talking about should be down in the video description below. So check them out. Wishlist this game. I'll see you guys next time.
Special thank you to Eric the Man 10 for supporting me on Ko-Fi.